in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you're welcome to another spirit filled message on fifty centric message if you're new to this channel I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted unto you and then God is going to visit you always thank you for watching be blessed Isaiah I believe 28 and verse 10 Isaiah 28 and verse 10 here's what it says for precept must be upon precept precept upon precept line upon line line upon line here a little and there a little very interesting expression so you get a little here and you get a little there that is how the entire frame is built precept upon precept line upon line here a little and there a little can I give you one more scripture in John chapter 16 it is interesting that this is a statement that Jesus himself is making from verse 12 John 16 and verse 12 Jesus is saying I have yet many things to say unto you but ye cannot bear them now just pause a minute let me explain to you what he's saying Jesus is saying as much as I have given you several revelations about the kingdom there are still other dimensions I have not given in his case it is not ignorance it is that the people were not prepared because as at that time the Holy Ghost had not come upon them are we together he's saying listen when you find another person with the Holy Spirit who is teaching you do not ignore him because he will come as an extension imagine if we had to depend on the teachings of Jesus alone you would think we will know everything there are many things about redemption we will not even understand because the entirety of the redemptive process was explained by Paul not even Jesus are we together so even for Jesus he's admitting here that there are many other things you need to learn my dear disciples for you to become apostles an apostle the word apostle comes from the Greek word apostolos it means to be sent are we together now he's saying that you cannot represent me with this level of knowledge there is still a lot more that you need to have revelation is dimensional can I give you number four the fourth information I'm building this foundation so that when I begin to discuss it will make sense to all of us I will do a very quick recap of everything I've said after the fourth point please write number four no single individual I wrote here is given the whole counsel of God no single individual is given the whole counsel of God no matter how efficient no single individual is given the whole counsel of God you may want to start that point because it is a very vital point no single individual is given the whole counsel of God let's look at a few scriptures are we still together Romans chapter 12 let's begin our reading from verse 3 again we are considering the topic discerning the body of Christ pay attention as I read for I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think but to think soberly according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith verse 4 we are reading down to 8 it says for as we have many members in one body all the members have not the same office please repeat the last line let's go back to verse 4 for emphasis ready let's read together and all the members have not the same office is it clear there from scripture that we have many members within the body he's using biology now to help us understand the body of Christ he says all members have not the same 
office. Verse 5. So we, being many, are one body in Christ, and everyone members of one another. Verse 6 now. It says, having then gifts differing. Is that in your Bible? Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us. It says, whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith. Seven. It says, or ministry, let us wait on our ministry. Or he that teacheth on teaching. Verse eight. Or he that exhorted on exhortation, he that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. Or he that ruleth, leadership now, with diligence, he that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. The point here is that there are diversities in the body. I'm using this scripture to buttress on the fourth point that no single individual is given the whole counsel of God, no matter how efficient. Second scripture, Luke chapter 22. We'll read from verse 19 and 20. This was the communion. And joyfully, we're stepping into the season of Easter now. Today is Palm Sunday. Many, uh, as you know, Luke 22 and verse 19. The Bible speaking about Jesus now. He was at table with the people to partake of the communion. And this is what the Bible says. The Bible says he took bread. And I hope you realize that Jesus had earlier said he was that bread. He called himself the bread of life. Is that true? And he took this bread now, which is himself. The Bible says he broke it and gave them. I like the word break it. No individual got the whole bread. Everybody got a part of it. The Bible says he took the whole bread, which he called himself. And in distributing it, he broke it. So that for you to have the whole bread, everybody must bring the piece that he collected. Are we together now? Now sit quietly. Praise the name of the Lord. So Jesus is teaching something powerful. The Bible never said he gave. You would have assumed that he just gave John the beloved or Peter or someone else. The Bible says he broke it, broke himself into various dimensions. Then he distributed to everyone who was there so that no single individual would claim he had all the bread. Are we together? No single individual, I said here, is given the whole counsel of God. Let's recap all we have said so far. Number one, I said that Jesus came to give us life and life abundant. You have to recognize this. Jesus said it himself that he came to give us life. Number two, that this life that we have now received in Christ, the reality of that victorious life is activated through knowledge. Number three, that the knowledge that we receive is dimensional and it is according to our callings and our assignments. And then number four, that no single individual is given the whole counsel of God. That means all the knowledge that is required for the excelling of the believer cannot be given to one person as an assignment. Are you getting the point now? This means, still buttressing on point four, I wrote here, listen before you write. This means in isolation to other dimensions within the body of Christ, no believer can grow accurately. Did you get that point? In isolation to other dimensions within the body of Christ, no believer, no matter how well intentioned, can grow accurately. Meaning, if you choose as a believer to refrain from accessing other dimensions of God that have been distributed according to the across the body of Christ, something will happen to the health of your growth. You will not grow accurately. Are we together? This means in isolation to other dimensions within the body of Christ, no believer can grow accurately. Let me give you two scriptures. One, Acts chapter 18. I like to use that scripture from verse 24. 
Acts chapter 18 from verse 24. Acts 18 from verse 24. The Bible says there was a certain Jew named Apollos. He was born at Alexandria, the Bible says, an eloquent man. Follow this man now. He was number one, an eloquent man. He was mighty in scriptures. The Bible says he came to Ephesus. We're reading down to 28. This man was instructed in the way of the Lord. That means he submitted himself to mentorship. Being fervent in spirit, he spake and taught diligently the things of God. But here's the problem. Knowing only the baptism of John. What a fervent man, full of zeal, submitting himself to mentorship. The Bible says he knew only the baptism of John. It is safe to assume that the person who taught him knew only the baptism of John too. Are we together now? Now, imagine if you were to learn God only through the lens of this man. You would limit yourself to only the realities as far as the baptism of John is concerned. And you would never be able to step into higher levels of spiritual truth. The Bible says, verse 26 now, he began to speak boldly in the synagogue, whom when Aquila and Priscilla had heard, they took him unto them. I like this scripture. They heard him and said, wow, what a zealous person. But this man is limited in a lot of knowledge. This man can be a better tool for the kingdom if we add these other dimensions to him. The Bible says they took him unto them and expounded unto him the way of God more perfectly. More perfectly. So if you had listened to this man by last year, you would be able to discern his limitations. And then two strange people called him and said, young man, you are a zealous person. I see your passion, but you are limited in knowledge. Let us supply for you other dimensions that make for your efficiency. If you were to listen to the same person by next year, you would see that you would come with another dimension of grace. Second scripture, Acts 19 from verse 1. Acts 19 verse 1, powerful. And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to the same Ephesus again and finding certain disciples. Please shout it with me, say disciples. Disciples meant that number one, they were saved, and number two, they were being taught and mentored by someone. Am I right on that? Verse 2, the Bible says, he said to them, have ye received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And watch this now. They said, we have not so much heard that there be any Holy Ghost, yet they were disciples. They were under the mentorship of someone, but they were the dimension of the Spirit. That was the dispensation of the Holy Spirit, yet it was not captured in their curriculum. Ah. We have not heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. It's like asking, do you know anything about the internet? And they say, no. We've been in school for years by a diligent professor, but we've never heard that there is anything called the internet. And I like Paul. Paul would have condemned them and insulted them. But Paul said, no. Now let me show you. He said, verse 3, he was surprised. He said, unto what baptism then were you baptized? In other words, who is responsible for this bad job like this? You mean the Holy Ghost is everywhere. You are in Ephesus, the place of revelation. And you are not even aware that there are spiritual things happening like this. They said, unto John's baptism. The same John again. Verse 4, and then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance. I like Paul. Paul took it from where they believed. He didn't throw away that. He said, listen, what you have gotten is not wrong. You have done well. I salute you and I salute the person who has taught you. But then let's take it from that point. He said he's, he was only pointing to you that at this point you should connect to something higher. And when they listened, verse 5, their hearts were open. The Bible says, verse 6, now please very quickly for sake of time, when Paul had laid his hands on them, 
the Holy Ghost came on them, meaning the Holy Ghost had been hovering around that lecture theater. Will you not allow me? I'm sure the guys were asking, why am I weak in the spirit? Why is it that I cannot pray? I am a faithful disciple. Where is the strength I will get to live the victorious life? There was a dimension they had ignored that they were suffering the symptom of the absence of the Holy Spirit. I wonder how they were effective disciples without the Holy Spirit. Because Jesus said, tarry. He said, there are many things that cannot happen until the Holy Spirit comes. Is someone learning already? No single individual is given the whole counsel of God. And that in isolation to other dimensions within the body, no believer can grow accurately. What's the next point now? <laughs> You've been writing many things. Let's call it five. Five. Anything you say you are right, just write. The most important thing is that you get the revelation. Are we together? Please write. There are consequences. This is about the crux of our discussion tonight. There are consequences for ignoring the whole counsel of God. Please write it down. There are consequences. It is not only wrong. There are consequences, sometimes lifetime consequences, for ignoring the whole counsel of God. There are consequences for ignoring the whole counsel of God. And could it be that some of the limitations in our lives today are the consequences some of the limitations that we have experienced in the various facets of our lives, could it be that those limitations have come as a result of consequences of ignoring other dimensions of God that he has put within the body for our profiting? Let me show you a scripture that details the consequences of ignoring the whole counsel of God and by extension ignoring the body of Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, we'll begin our reading from verse 27. 1 Corinthians 11, Paul was teaching about the communion. And then he veered off to explain the mystery of the communion as touching the body of Christ. Here's what he had to say. Therefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily, shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. So the context is he was teaching people how to take the communion, as you know, properly. But he's saying that the communion itself is an adumbration of the body of Christ and then the Lord's body that we call the body today, the, the corporate body of believers, 28. It says, but let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. Verse 29. I like this. It says, for he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation unto himself, not discerning the Lord's body. Not discerning the Lord's body. What is the result? Let's read verse 30. One, two, read. For this cause, hold on. For what cause? The sin of not discerning the body. Many are weak. Many are sickly. And many die. That there are many people today who are weak. All kinds and all dimensions of weakness. And it is that they have not been able to tap from the vast provisions of strength that is resident within the body. There are many who are sick today who should not be. There are many, sadly, who have died today who have no business with the grave. But because of negligence of the provisions that are resident within the body of Christ. If you are with me, please say amen. This is very, very important. There are consequences for ignoring the body of Christ. Now, I need to teach you a very powerful concept about how God trains men, 
how God deals with men. And let's try to trace where this trouble of not opening up to the whole counsel of God came from. Generally speaking, when God trains you, for instance, you are a man of God, if God is calling you into, say, the prophetic ministry, please, I want you to listen, or into the evangelistic or into entrepreneurship, for instance, what he's going to do usually is that he will limit you to a particular scope of training. Are we together now? He wants you to specialize in the area where you will be serving the body of Christ. There are many things that God will teach brother A that he will not teach brother B. Not because he does not want brother B to know, but it may be a distraction at that level of his training. Are we together? Let me give you an instance. If God is calling you into the prophetic and the apostolic ministry, chances are excellent that in your core training with God, he may not teach you things like excellence, administration. In fact, based on the scope of your training, you may never even see him lead you. To, that will even be a distraction because at the foundation of your training, you are given to consecration, fasting, and prayer, multiplied visions. You are learning about the dynamics of the anointing. Now, after 10, 15 years, here comes a vibrant man of God with precision as far as the prophetic is concerned. Mighty healing grace. And then you start a ministry. And at the, at the instance of the ministry, because there's no need for organization and leadership, you would not see the relevance of the thing that the dimension you have not received. By the time members begin to come, you don't know what to do with them in terms of excellence and administration. Now, you are a mighty man of God, a great prophet, a great apostle, but there's no financial management. There is no excellence. Are we together? So members just come to receive of the miracle and go back because the atmosphere is pungent in terms of excellence. And you will be wondering, but I am anointed. Why is this thing not working? There is a dimension of excellence that you have not captured to be added to your experience to make you efficient. Now listen carefully. Now for another person, because God called this man to be a financial apostle. God called him to be an entrepreneur. In his training with God, he will find out that God is training him on leadership, capacity building. He may hardly fast for one week, I tell you. He may, he may not see the value of fasting and prayer, praying and all of this because he will spend time developing his mind. God will give him a visa at age 19 to go to John Maxwell Leadership School. By 22, this gentleman had already, he may have gone to Harvard and the rest. World-renowned leader. And by the time he gets to 25, he's already a multi-millionaire, working with a lot of intelligent people. If that person sets up an institution, chances are excellent that when he sees someone prophesying and laying hands on the sick, he will just say there's something wrong because of the bias that has come with his training. Listen carefully. This is a message that is bringing deliverance to many people. So there is a bias that comes by default and God left it intentionally in training you you may never know that there are other dimensions that are needed in your life but not captured in your training so by the time the Lord brings you and you begin your manifestation you will teach and mentor people from the lens of your limitation are we together now you will usually mentor people all that you knew in your training was praying and fasting and word study that is what you are going to teach and train people for except that you will start seeing a widespread deficiency in their life based on the dimensions that you do not have but they need is someone learning so let's assume that i have no knowledge of music my own is prayer and singing but of my prayer and teaching and then God raises some of these my precious people and I say they are not needed you raise your voice and you are singing and people ask whether you are praying or singing and you will not allow the diversities come it doesn't matter the most important thing is what I am saying you see that you are going to you will stop the potential of efficiency within the body that has come as a result of your limited training there are many people today who have 
books that they receive from God. But the simple reason why those books cannot get to the globe is that they are poor. Simple. It's, a, it's not demonic attack. They are poor and they do not even know how to be global in anything. Yet, within the body, there are people who cheaply, in five minutes, they will teach you how to be global as a crash course. And, and they will terminate limitation and mediocrity in your life. And yet, because we are not able to reach out, we remain stunted and limited. Is God speaking to someone? There are families today, please listen to me, who have suffered poverty and are suffering poverty. And when you learn God through those families, God is misrepresented. Because you say, what kind of a God is this who cannot empower a family? There are many preachers, I grew up respectfully speaking, seeing many missionaries and many preachers who love God with all their hearts. Many of them today have joined the cloud of witnesses, but they had no influence, no efficiency. I saw their wives and their children suffer. Their messages did not make sense. What kind of a God is this? You advocate a kind God, yet they are driving the man's child from school you mean such a responsible God who you are giving your all for cannot be so responsible to help the child because we had to learn God from the limited lens and the scope of many it was a misrepresentation of God and sadly that is still happening within the body of Christ is someone learning now here's where the real problem is the real problem is not our being dimensional or our being limited. The real problem, unfortunately, is when the limitation now collides with pride and ego. When the limitation that is on a businessman, a man of God collides with pride and ego, it will equal a disaster. Because now to admit that I do not know everything, to admit that I am limited, that looks like a sting to my ego. I need to keep the semblance of invincibility to make members respect me. I need to keep a semblance of control that I know it all and I know everything. This is what has been destroying the body of Christ, sadly in Nigeria, across Africa, and even the globe. So I would rather someone suffer poverty for decades. I am not giving that grace, but I will limit that person from accessing that grace cheaply. It is within the body. I would rather create a theology that makes it look like love Jesus no matter what. And that is true, but it is incomplete. There are many things that God wants to be captured in my life and your life. But they are not available with us. But they are available within the body. I want you to please listen very carefully. Having diversities of gifts. I have met men and women of God in this nation and across the world. And I submit to you that I am, I am, I am humbled by the investment of the spirit that he has placed upon lives and upon destinies. I've traveled a bit and in my, my little sojourn, I have met with men in the business world, in politics and even in ministry. And I, I have been tremendously blessed by the kind, the quality and the dimension of God that is resident within those people. Imagine what would have happened to our lives if we became limited to say all that God taught me is all that I need to learn. The same Jesus who taught the disciples, told them there is still more lecture coming. It will not be by me, but it is still profitable for you. If we rejected the teachings of Paul and said, Paul, who are you to teach me? Jesus himself was the one who taught me. We would never know the Pauline epistle. We would never know that we have been seated with Christ. We would never know that we are to stand fast in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free. We would not even know how to ward off the arsenals of darkness. It was Paul who arranged the administration of the gifts of the Spirit in 1 Corinthians 12, 13, 14. We would never have known that there 
remained faith, hope, and love, but the greatest is love. It was Paul that taught us how to manage diversities in the body. Imagine learning God without Paul. But as powerful as Paul is, nobody taught love like John. He was not called John the Powerful. He was called John the Beloved. Whether his gospel or his epistle, when you read theologically speaking the four synoptic accounts, most of them started from an archaeological point or a historic point. Are we together? It was John that began his discourse from the divinity of Christ. John 1.1, 1, 1, he used the same expression that was in Genesis 1.1. 1, 1. In the beginning, same thing with Genesis 1.1. 1, 1. In the beginning John was so into spiritual things he was the beloved of God imagine learning the Bible without the book of Revelation and the book of Revelation came from John remove Proverbs from the Bible and see how much of wisdom you have removed from your life remove Genesis Exodus Numbers, Leviticus, Deuteronomy, and see how bankrupt your spiritual experience is. Those five books are captured in one name, Moses. Remove the prophets, both minor and major, and read your Bible without them, and see how lopsided your understanding about God will be. Is someone learning now? So let's assume all that I had to learn God was the book of Leviticus. Imagine that this is my Bible and the only thing is Leviticus. And I would argue when I saw the book of Acts, I would say this is nonsense, absolute nonsense, 28 chapters full of rubbish. Imagine if I saw the four Gospels, who is the Holy Spirit? Not really mentioned, he was only mentioned in type in the book of Leviticus. Imagine the dimension of God I would never carry. My question for you this night is I wonder what peace you are holding and ignoring the rest. And claiming that you know everything about God. This is true for pastors. This is true for businessmen. And the trouble there is that the moment you attain the position of leadership, there are people who with unbending loyalty, they would follow every perspective you communicate to them, believing that the propositions you have given them is all there is to learn. Imagine if we never had the opportunity to learn the life of Joseph. How would we know that God lifts men? Imagine if we never knew the gospels that Jesus died. Do you know what? How erroneous the epistles will be without the gospel. Suddenly Paul shows up somewhere and says, I've been crucified with Christ. Which Christ? He was the incarnate one. From where? He was the word too. Word? From where? Imagine the confusion. It was the gospel that gave perspective to the epistles. When you read the gospel, it gives you the foundation to understand. For all have sinned. What sin did I commit? Against who? Are we together now? What is the way? What life of God are you talking about? Ladies and gentlemen, please hear me. I have observed with sadness for many years, and I have lovingly called the body of Christ to attention. This is a clarion call that we have allowed ego and pride to interrupt the free flow of the multifaceted dimensions of God distributed within the body that was made for our holistic growth because of our fears, our insecurities, respectfully speaking. There are people who have gone to the grave today who if they only knew that there is a potent healing anointing within the body of Christ. Now you see, you learn unity from the life of doctors. A doctor can meet a patient and when they are diagnosing something the doctor can be a consultant yet he's secured enough to say well um there is a machine that we need to diagnose you i do not have it in my hospital but there are only 12 of them across the globe i will write a referral for you is that true there's only one of that place go for that test meet doctor so 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 and so you can even tell him that i sent you and when that other doctor receives the report because of that humility of heart that patient is saved 
There are many patients that have died in the body of Christ because of the ego of leaders. So I rather keep you poor simply because I do not know anything about wealth and prosperity to humble myself and learn or to outsource intelligence for your sake. I will not allow my ego. I wouldn't allow myself to look that weak. So I rather downplay the importance of prosperity or if you are a prosperous person but you do not have the grace for prayer and supplication you do not have the power of revelation to build people spiritually to be men of stature rather than taking responsibility and to outsource that dimension and help your people I would rather just teach on the mind and shrug away prayer and say after all the prayer is not important fasting is not important and you are watching prosperous people who one demonic attack will sweep their entire destiny because they do not know they knew only the baptism of John is God speaking to us if I cannot sing, I would downplay worship. What do you need worship for? You just raise your voice and pray and see what happens. How about the psalmist? How about the Bible that talks about psalms and hymns and spiritual songs? It says to make melody in your heart. Can I tell you, one of the deficiencies in the body of Christ, and this is purely an issue of ego that Satan has taken advantage of, is that for some reason, we feel weak and we feel incapacitated when we are brought to a point where we have to admit that we do not know everything. Most, and I know where this came from, let me tell you the truth. These are extensions of insecurity that came from Africa, unfortunately. Because we are used to backgrounds where we were not believed in. Now you, we can hold on to ministry or business or whatever it is that gives us relevance. We hold it with such jealousy that our ego is connected to it. But it takes loving Jesus and loving the people he has sent you to, to be able to keep your ego aside and say, listen, beyond me, if you need this and it is important for your growth, let me ensure that you have access to that truth so that you will rise. Paul said, I kept back nothing provided it was for your profiting. So, let me paint for you a picture of the variety of limitations that are represented in the body of Christ. Listen carefully. There is prosperity without spiritual fire. Very prosperous. Where people continue to excel in terms of career, but spiritually there is bankruptcy. On another hand, there is a lot of prophetic advantage without soundness and respect to the word. So we have all kinds of prophetic manifestations and they are profitable except that because of the, the charismatism around the prophetic, most people have downplayed the word. What do I need the word for when a man of God can tell me the next five years of my life in ten minutes? Are we together? Then, thirdly, we have people who are anointed, full of anointing and charismatism, but zero character. Zero character. Not even small. Zero character. Are we together now? Then we have those who have character, solid character, full of suffering. Character with poverty. Character with mediocrity. Character with failure. Their children never rise. In fact, respectfully speaking, they can even fight anything that looks like growth because they perceive it to be antichrist. I wonder which of this variety you and your children have been a victim of. My assignment tonight is to let the body of Christ know that in this mistake, there is no winner. In this mistake, I repeat, there is no winner. So God has granted you the grace, for instance, to bring the dimension of kingdom prosperity to the body of Christ. We must appreciate that contribution. God has granted the dimension of grace to bring the ministry of prayer and supplication to the body. God has granted grace to bring the prophetic to the body. God has granted grace to bring the sound doctrine, the teaching grace to the body. God has brought grace to understand leadership and influence. Listen, the body of Christ will become delivered the day we, number one, 
admit that no matter how efficient we are, we cannot be an individual capture of everything. Then number two, to have a healthy respect for the dimensions that are available in the body and needed, but not in our lives. So I must be able to appreciate what some evangelist is doing across Africa and doing across the globe. As much as I do evangelism, I am not called to the office of an evangelist. And so when you see someone who is classically doing that, whose life is about soul winning, I mean missionaries all around, there are some of you, if God sent you to Zamfara or Meduguri, you will spend your life casting that voice. And there are people, when they hear God once, they will pack everything and sell it and be on their way going. How do you trivialize them? Are we together? Please listen very carefully. The prophetic, unfortunately, you will hear me say, and I will repeat again, the prophetic has gone through several kinds of things. It needs a lot of cleaning up, I must admit. However, there are people who do not want to hear the word prophetic. Once they hear pro, they say, no, that is demonic, satanic. And you look at their lives and you can see the deficiency of the prophetic. You know that what they really need is the prophetic. Please listen. There is no tell them. God is speaking to all of us. So make sure you don't misbehave as you hear me teach. I'm giving a strong disclaimer now. Praise the name of the Lord. Imagine Jesus without Joseph of Arimathea. That body will be left on the cross there. Imagine Jesus without Simon of Cyrene. He would die on the ground and never be a cause. But imagine the world without Jesus. Leave all the Josephs of Arimathea and there is no Jesus. Imagine Jesus without John the Baptist. No call to ministry. Imagine Jesus without an intercessor called Anna the prophetess. Maybe they would have killed him when he was small. That they ran away with Jesus meant he could die. Are we together now? Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. When you hear me say my life is a product of many anointings, I mean it. I want to teach you a few things that will bless you. I hope you are learning already. Let's continue. Write this down, please. There is... A major fear, and this is what I want to address. There are many people today who have not opened up themselves to the ministry of the body of Christ because of two dimensions of fears, and I want to address it by the Spirit. One fear is unnecessary, but the other is quite necessary. Not necessary, but worthy of consideration. And I want you to listen very carefully. There are many people who are not able to receive from the body because of fear number one, the fear of being corrupted by the sad nonsense and rubbish that we find flying around the body of Christ. There are people who their resistance to opening up themselves either to other ministries or to other expressions within the body is a legitimate concern. Why? Because there is no denying the fact, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not speaking about universalism where you embrace everything. You just follow me. I will always balance and give you perspective on all my discussions. Are we together? Yes. There are people who have legitimate fears and it, it takes only a blind person to not tell you that there are disturbing things across the body of Christ within Nigeria, Africa, and the globe all kinds of things that call for concern. So there are people whose refusal to be opened is, on that wise is sincere and legitimate because it took them a lot to build a track record with God. It took them a lot to build their business, to build a life of righteousness. They do not want to just pollute and corrupt themselves with any kind of nonsense that is happening. You find this across the body of Christ. There are many denominations today, respectfully speaking, who have not opened up to the diversity of the body for this same reason. Legitimately so. But then the second dimension of fear 
which is unnecessary. The second dimension of fear that is unnecessary is the fear that has come by reason of believing. Listen carefully. That if you open up yourself to the diversities in the body, something will happen to your life and you may lose touch with God. I can tell you it's an unnecessary fear. I'm going to show you a scripture right now that will bless you. Is someone learning? The secret to receiving from the body of Christ is captured in two very profound verses. The Lord gave me these scriptures many years ago and it brought deliverance to my life. Let me share them with you. Are you ready? In Judges chapter 14, scripture number one, Judges 14 from verse 12 to 14. Judges 14, 12 to 14. This was Samson. Remember when Samson was on his way going back, he tore a lion, the Bible says, and he killed that lion with his bare hands. And now he was returning back to go and see Delilah and something happened. Samson said unto them, I will now put forth a riddle. If you can certainly declare to me within seven days of the feast and find it out, then I will give you 30 sheets and 30 change of garments. What was the riddle? Verse 13. But if you cannot declare it, then you shall give me what I was to give you now. They said, put forth the riddle. Let us hear. Watch this. This riddle is the mystery behind the fear of receiving from the body. And it is also the solution to receiving from the body. This was the riddle. He said unto them, out of the eater came forth meat. And out of the strong came forth sweetness. The Bible says, and they could not in three days expound the riddle. Let me interpret the riddle for you. That out of the eater came forth meat, and that out of the strong came forth witness, uh, sweetness. You know what happened? He killed a lion, remember the story? And then he threw the lion and it became a carcass there. And then when he came, he found out that bees came to make honey in the carcass. And that was a mystery to Samson. Out of the many green and the lush trees and branches, why would bees choose a carcass to come and make honey? It is not usual. Bees will use rocks and trees, but now from a carcass, the carcass of a lion, he reached into the carcass and he brought honey. Do you know the meaning of that? There is this treasure in earthen vessels that out of a carcass, Something that is rotting, something that is decayed, yet sweetness and honey can still come out of it. This is the mystery to receiving from the body of Christ. It is true that there is imperfection in the body at many levels. It is true that there are people who are still rising and growing. It is true that the body of Christ over the years have been marred with several kinds of limitations. But out of that carcass, God has chosen to still put honey there. And listen, the secret to receiving is that if you can endure the smell of the carcass, then you can bring out the honey. You can't bring honey from a carcass without enduring the smell. The first thing you will need to endure is the smell of the carcass. But there is genuine honey that is locked up within there. I know that the man of God has hot temper. We are praying that God will walk on him. But meanwhile, do not allow the temper stop you from receiving the prophetic. Because there is genuine prophetic there. And if because of your fear of, the, or of anger, do you know what it meant to be a mentee to Elijah? Theologically speaking, Elijah was a hot-tempered man. You need to respect Elijah for enduring all the tantrums and the emotional swings that came from him. But one thing you could not deny was the authentic prophetic grace that was upon Elijah to the point that he was one of the two witnesses that appeared to Jesus, Moses and Elijah. Are we together? Whoever told you that you can only receive from perfect people, unfortunately, there is none. Let me repeat, unfortunately, there is none. 
Apostle, I love you so much. You have not seen me when I'm angry. You have not seen me when I'm hungry. Are we together? You only love what you have seen. This is an uncomfortable message, but it is a big, it will bring liberation to the body of Christ. Out of something strong has come something sweet. I know that in that ministry there is a lot of tribalism. By the time you land there and you are not this and that tribe, you will feel it from the gate. But can you endure that pain of tribalism? Because in the midst of the tribalism, there is sound communication of doctrine. Can you endure the smell of the carcass so that you receive the honey? Are we together? There are many people who do not believe that anybody can carry the grace of God simply because you are aware of the limitations that are around men. Even if Jesus were on earth, you would have still run away from him. Your Jesus that you love so much, find out what he did with, with a whip in the temple. Imagine if your uncle was part of those who were flogged there. <laughs> that your uncle returned back with scars. Who flogged you? Not a demon? Not Beelzebub? Jesus, the Savior of the world, he didn't preach to me. He didn't ask me to repent. He didn't hold me like a dove. He flogged me. <laughs> Are we together? So imagine the day they called Jesus Beelzebub and you were there. You would be happy to concur. That's the Jesus you are saying you love, full of compassion. That he came and healed a few people and left others. The same Jesus that stood and called people older than him brood of vipers. Where then is respect? Flawless Jesus. Sinless Jesus. An exceptional leader. That's the kind of pastor I want. Don't blame the disciples for being angry. They had to say, Jesus, let me tell you. We are respecting you, but if you are playing with us so that you will run away one day, you are not going to have it easy with us. We have left all to follow you. We are not understanding your ways again. <laughs> listen, listen. I'm, I'm teaching you something. I hope you are learning. There is no perfect man of God. There is no perfect man or woman anywhere. This is not an endorsement of limitation and to not give us the appetite to press for growth. That is not what I'm saying. But I am saying in every church, in every denomination, can I tell you, you will need to endure the smell of the carcass to pick the honey that is there. There are men of God who are arrogant. There are men of God who are tribalistic, unfortunately and sadly. There are men of God who are very full of themselves. There are men of God who are very less fair. It doesn't matter what happened. You can tell them they stole something. You say, sorry, God will do something to you about it. And that sense of leadership and responsibility is not there. But in the midst of that carcass, there is still honey. Can you endure the smell? Smith Wigglesworth used to wind his hand at dead bodies. They once brought him a dead body, the story records, and he wound his hand and gave the dead body a punch. Imagine that were your child. And you said, man of God, I hear that you raised the dead, and he says, stand back. And he's winding his hand, you thought it was a prophetic act. And the next thing, he will punch that dead body the first time. And he said, come back to life. And the dead body falls like a pack of cards. And he's about to repeat it the second time. Yes. Read your history books and they will tell you. And he punched the second time. And by the third time, he punched and the dead body coughed back and came to life. How do you explain that? How do you explain a savior who spits on the ground and uses mud? You brought your kind relative who has been suffering. Please open the eyes. And the next thing you see someone with dry mud. Then he tells him, find your way and go to a pool called Siloam. Go and wash and you will see. Will you return to such a church? <laughs> the reason why many people do not receive from the body of Christ is there is a godlike dimension of perfection that people expect from men of God 
and from everybody. Let me announce to you early enough, you will not find it. I repeat, you will not find it. Not with yourself and not with anyone. There is this treasure in earthen vessel. I wish you was just quiet. I wish you don't really used to shout. Why is it that the guy shouts at demons up and down like that? Well, God saw that limitation and still kept the anointing upon him. If you really need that grace, you have to endure. You would think God will carry the anointing away. He still left it there. Let me show you the second scripture. Is someone learning? Scripture number two is found in Revelation chapter 1 from verse 10. Revelations 1 verse 10. John says, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet. Follow closely, verse 11, saying, I am Alpha and Omega. I am the first and the last. And what thou seest, write in a book and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, Smyrna, and Pergamos, and unto Thyatria, and Sardis, and Philadelphia, and Laodicea. Verse 12. The Bible says, and I turn, John is speaking now, to see the voice that spake with me. And being turned, I saw what? Seven golden candlesticks. So he's looking for the person speaking to him. And his attention is drawn. And what he sees, seven golden candlesticks. Verse 13. In the midst of the seven candlesticks, he kept looking at the candlesticks and he said, I saw one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot and girt about with paps and a golden girdle. Do you know what that meant? So he hears a voice directing him that I'm about to give you a series of revelation. Make sure you write them. He turns to find out the voice and the first thing he sees is the church. The seven candlesticks, the Bible in interpreting this says is the whole church, the Catholic church. The word Catholic means the universal church, the collection of the body of Christ. Is it not amazing that before he saw God, he saw the church? It was when he kept looking at the church, even in that imperfect state, he said in the midst of the candlestick, I still saw Jesus there. In the midst of the anger problem, in the midst of the limitation in the body of Christ, as I looked to hear the voice, an accurate voice came out of an imperfect body. And as I turned to see, I had to see the church first. As I endured looking at the church, I saw Jesus standing in the midst of the church. Standing in the midst of the church with all her imperfections, with all her limitations, I still saw Jesus standing. This is very powerful. Ladies and gentlemen, when you look for trouble in any church, you will see it there. When you look for all kinds of sentiments, you will find it there. If you look for Satan in any church, you will find him there. I can assure you, if he was in heaven, he is on earth. Where else will he not be? He has been everywhere. But when you look for Jesus... You will find him beyond the tribalism, beyond the sentiments, beyond the limitations. When you look with an open heart, you will see Jesus standing there. And that should be your focus. That is the key to receiving from the body of Christ. Looking for perfection will be a waste of time. Looking for flawlessness and blamelessness will be a waste of time. Every single person in the body of Christ is a project in motion that God is helping. Are we together now? Yes. That is why Jesus, even in his exalted position, is still making intercession for the saints. Paul, at the zenith of his apostolic life, here's what he said, that I may know him. He admitted that there are many things I have not yet attained unto. For as long as what we are looking for is perfection and flawlessness, when the Bible says, be ye perfect, the word there is not blameless, is the word matured. He's talking of maturity, to attain unto a stature 
by grace. That is a possibility and that must be the press of every believer. Having said all of this, I must give you a very strong disclaimer that using this message as a license to remain mediocre spiritually is not what I'm teaching. Using this message to endorse licentiousness is not what I'm teaching. Using this message to embrace the good, the bad, and the ugly, both demonic and everything is not what I'm teaching. This message is a clarion call to reveal number one, that as an individual, we do not sustain what it takes to communicate the entire counsel of God as individuals. There will be a need to understand the diversities in the body and to be open to receive from the multifaceted dimensions that are in the body. No matter how I teach you on finances, no matter how I show you the way of the Lord, you cannot come close to veterans in finance, men like like Pastor Sam Adeyemi. These men are not just business people. They are called. It's a mantle. It's an office. It's a mandate. Are we together? No matter how I evangelize and go around the world, you will not stand close to a man like Reinhard Bonke of late, a man like Billy Graham, a man like Benny Hinn. These are men who were called by God. They were given the keys to nations. Are we learning? I once met a man who teaches scriptures. Um, he, he just does it, you know, I think somewhere in the US. He teaches from Genesis 1 to Revelation 22 as Bible study. Genesis 1, verse by verse. You can register as a student in a school. Verse by verse till he completes it. What a teacher. Do we come close to such a man with all the little scriptures that we pick to make notes? This man is having an exegesis of scripture and he has been doing this for at least 40 years. I shared with you about the dear woman and you know one of the days she came to Koinonia and told me now she does not do two weeks again. The one who reads her Bible in two weeks. I met her in Kano and she came for Koinonia not too long and she said she had good news for me. I said, what is it? She said, now I finished my Bible at a shorter time. I said, this woman... Ladies and gentlemen, it takes a lot of godliness and self-security to be able to admit and even embrace the diversities in the body. No matter how anointed I am, let me tell you the truth. What an elder will give you, blessing you from the pain of their experience, you will never be able to get, no matter how anointed I am, that you meet your grandfather who was a missionary and he says, kneel down, I want to bless you. No matter how anointed we are, we know the difference between us and the fathers. And no level of arrogance and stupidity, at least let me speak for myself, will ever make me to downplay, demean, or think that by reason of the help of God upon our lives. In truth, we are not going to honor them to the detriment of the grace of God upon our lives. It is not a lie that God has helped us, but we must be wise enough to know that God has shown mercy and they have seen far. When I have the privilege to see the fathers, I am quick to look for something to honor them and to have them speak over my life. I'm not looking for a verse. I'm not necessarily looking for Bible study. I'm looking for the blessing that he can speak over your life and open the tulip gates of your destiny. Is someone helping you? Is, is, is someone being helped by God? Do you know your parents, watch this, your biological parents, there is a blessing that comes from them that no preacher can give you. It does not matter, I can lay my hands on you, I can soak you inside a bottle of oil as though to marinate you, you will come out, you may never, never have the privilege, your father and your mother to bless you from their hearts. Everybody has his place. So when it is time to preach now, to do all of this, you are sitting down to listen to me. But there are people here who run all kinds of leadership institutes. There are people, there are all kinds of people here, legal practitioners. If I'm in the court of law, I will not say, sit down, I'm a preacher. No, I enter there and sit quietly and listen to the intelligence of the judges while they talk. Is that true? If I go to a restaurant, I don't say everybody clear the way for me. A man of God is there. I have to sit down and submit to what is there because if I allow pride, hunger will deal with me in that restaurant. 
Am I right on that? Do you have the courage to admit what God has given you and to also admit what is available in the body for your blessing, but not through your life? Apostle, I'm confused right now. I've been confused for years. If you open up yourself to the accurate prophetic, in five minutes, the mysteries behind the ill happenings in your family can be revealed. And you, God can help you solve that problem in a moment. Are you willing to? That is the question. Apostle, I love the Lord, but it does not seem like I'm experiencing growth even in my church and my membership. Do you know that there are people who have what I call a kingmaker anointing? They have the grace that enthrones kings. When you see them, will you be open to receive? They may not have all the revelation you have, but I tell you, they have a throne that backs their mantle in heaven. Imagine if I never met the dear woman, the women that prophesied to me years ago that I met in Joss. I wish I knew those women. Maybe they've even gone to be with the Lord now. I look at these women. They didn't bring any Bible study revelation simply for showing them benevolence and honor. They look at this small boy and the woman looks at me with the audacity of an elder and says forever walk upon gold. <laughs> Hallelujah. When I have the honor and the privilege of meeting our fathers and I get on my knees and they are praying, before I listen to what they are saying, I open up my spirit like a rubber ring. I stretch it to the, to the limit. Lord, let everything they have said, let it rest upon my life. What grace, what dimension in the body have you neglected to your detriment? Could it be that if you really believe that the healing anointing is in the body of Christ, the sickness that is plaguing you now, there are many people who may not be staying far from this place, but the miracle service will be happening. They are seeing what God is doing. But that open-heartedness to come and receive, it may not be there. Isn't it amazing how many people can die close to the anointing? It is a tragedy that should never be. Apostle, my child is not doing well in school. Do you know there is somebody who has been given grace within the body of Christ? No matter how dull the head of your child is, you just hand that child to that person. There is a grace. They can turn that weak child to become a genius. Have you seen people like that in the body of Christ? So why then do we still have people not doing well, whereas these provisions are in the body? It is largely pride and neglect. That is the truth. I thank God for the privilege of having access to receive the blessing that I received from our father and the Lord Bishop David Oedeko. I remember when I went, they have told you the story that when all was said and done, the Lord asked me to lay my hands on the ground there in Canaan land. And the Lord spoke to me and said, from today you have entered the overflow anointing. There's a light that I see in spite of all the darkness that surrounds me. And this light that I see only comes alive every time I hear your voice. It comes alive every time I hear From the elder you have neglected, to the entrepreneur whose wisdom you have neglected, to the prophet who you have pushed away because it does not carry a semblance of what you like, to the apostle whose ministry you have refused to receive. Are we together? To a woman who, though uneducated, she raised 12 children and none of them is a thief. The least of those children is a PhD holder. By what grace did that woman take to raise 12 children and you are struggling with two? Do you know there is a grace on that woman that can come on your life and turn your life around? Are we together? For this cause, many are weak. For this cause, many are sick. 
For this cause, many sleep. I have admitted to the body of Christ and to you, and I will do it forever without shame. We do not have everything. Our assignment is not to do everything. Our assignment is to be faithful, dispensing the dimension of God that has been committed to us. Are we together? While honoring the diversities that are spread across the body and receiving it for our own profit in ourselves. When I have the privilege of businessmen and very wealthy entrepreneurs, when I have the privilege of meeting with them, they may come to respect me, apostle, we came for prayer. And sometimes I'll say, we'll do the prayer after the discussion. But let me learn what I do not know. And in five minutes, years and decades of intelligence distilled through a heart that is willing to transfer knowledge, you would learn something in one moment that can help the ministry. Let me tell you something. Years ago in Zaria, when we were about, I think it was when we were about to start Koinonia, Already we had meetings and the ministry was ongoing. But when we were about to start Koinonia properly, the Lord gave me an instruction. And the group of people then were about maybe three, four hundred people. And the Lord gave me an instruction to tell everybody to write. Write a few things you feel that can be incorporated into the ministry to make it better. Don't write your name so that there's no fear. And don't be nasty. Don't, don't be disrespectful. Just write your observations. Ladies and gentlemen, I sat down on every one of these and wrote some of the things, the principles and the ideas that run this ministry today were not my personal inventions. They came because I appreciated the people God gave me. And I said, please, suggest whatever can make this better. And you can, you listen, as anointed as I was, there were things I could not see. Who have you ignored because of pride? The know-it-all mentality will end up being a disaster to the body of Christ. Thank God for technology. It is decentralizing this pride right now. Because you see, I foresee that in the next few years, people will start asking questions in the body of Christ, respectfully speaking, that will challenge us men of God. Because we have taught certain things we need to politely withdraw with humility. People already have access to superior teachings right now. And they are learning more superior ways of the kingdom. And they are comparing spiritual things with spiritual. And saying, listen, something is wrong somewhere. Can I tell you, if you're a man of God here, please hear me. Co-laborers in the gospel, I speak from a heart of love. Let us be unashamed enough to admit that there is more than what we carry. That does not downplay or demean the investments of God in our lives. It is a humble appreciation that there can be more than we have seen. After all, the mission is Jesus, not us. So what then is the shame? If it is true that the mission is Jesus, is it unfair if Joshua Selman decreases so that Jesus increases? What then is the shame? It's in you, Lord. It's in you, Lord. We know there's more that's found in you. It's in you, Lord. It's in you, Lord. We know there's more that's found in you. And we will never settle for less. We know there's more that's found in you. And we will never settle for less. When we know there's more that's found in you. We're currently preparing for our international conferences, and there's no time to begin to tell you the gift of the body of Christ as far as their contribution towards this conference is concerned. Some of the people that make up the team, the planning team, the level of brilliance and intelligence that is coming from people, there were many things I would otherwise be clueless about. I am someone who is passionate about knowledge, but I'm not ashamed of admitting what I do not know. 
God has brought all kinds of intelligent people who have come up with ideas and propositions. In preparing for this conference, I've had to call a few people who have had experience on that wise to say, is there anything you can teach me? I know that there are some things I need to learn. I will not carry the pride to say, after all, the person who is talking to you is not a failure, but this is not the best of you. How many of us can humble ourselves to press for knowledge sincerely. Business people, will you keep failing and losing money in ignorance? Whereas for half the price using the currency of humility, someone can teach you the way out and take you away from shame and reproach. Man of God, with humility you can receive an anointing and go back and add that anointing to what you have and your ministry would blossom. Let us not allow God's people die because of our ego. Remember the mission is Jesus. When the mission is Jesus, you must be able to stay out of the way. Let me use a better expression. To decrease like John said, so that he will increase. Our ego is interrupting the program of God at a frequency that is becoming disturbing. We do not have everything. We do not know everything. As far as that which God has committed to us is concerned, we owe God's people to teach with diligence. The areas God has given me, the areas of grace, I will teach you with all my heart and I will serve the body of Christ in life and in death. But the areas where I have not been graced, with humility I will sit down and learn from those who God has given. There is nothing to be ashamed of. I remind you again, body of Christ, the mission is not koinonia. The mission is Jesus. The mission is not apostle, prophet, evangelist, businessman. The mission is Jesus. I pray that the body of Christ will grow and mature to a stage where we are able to diminish our ego and our insecurities that have come from our backgrounds to throw away our prejudices and to focus on exalting Jesus. Koinonia, for as long as I'm alive, I will never let my ego to let you die in limitation. No. It is Jesus to be revealed. If there is a mighty man of God that is in the making, I will share with you what I know about ministry. And when I reach my limit, I will recommend books by veterans who have a greater track record than me. And I will tell you, unashamedly study their materials. They will do a better job in building you than me. It is not insecurity. Let me teach you something. When you are willing to lose, that is how you will gain. Members are not stupid people. When they discern insecurity and manipulation that comes as a result of insecurity, they will run away. Jesus said we gain things by the willingness to lose them. Koinonia is not my ministry. I'm only a privileged steward over this. It belongs to Jesus. God forbid if I die today, the ministry will not end. I am too small a factor to impede the program of God. It is a privilege that I'm alive and having the honor that God has given me in my lifetime to do what I'm doing. This is the orientation we must have in the body of Christ. And please don't tell me it does not matter. The destruction that our ego and ignorance is bringing to God's program is becoming a matter of casualty. We must be able to trust God. I travel and I meet a great man of God, an evangelist. Oh, God bless you, sir. Oh, I've seen the wonderful things you are doing. Ah, apostle, don't laugh at us. You are the ones who are doing great things. And I say, no, no. I would be stupid to imagine and downplay your relevance. Let me use the opportunity to say this. You see, every man of God is somebody's man of God, even if he's not your man of God. Let me repeat again for your knowledge. Every man of God is somebody's man of God. If he's not your man of God, respect the fact that he's somebody's man of God. If you tear down, castigate, insult, demean, downplay another person's man of God, the loyalty of the members will force them to fight to defend their people. And at the end of it, I told you earlier on, there will be no winner. Are we together now? Yes. Every businessman is somebody's mentor. If you do not appreciate their value to you, 
Leave them in peace to bless the people they are blessing. Are we together now? Yes. There is nothing wrong with having your reservations, but let it not be to the detriment of the overall growth of the body. I'm saying this because it is very important for us to learn. I repeat again, every man of God, genuine man of God, is somebody's man of God. You may not appreciate of their ministry. They may not seem to communicate any value to you, but realize that they may not be of value to you, but that is somebody's man of God. Let me give you an instance. If this man standing here is some man of God, for instance, Pastor A, let's call him, and this guy is responsible for your salvation, for raising you, while you were trusting God for children, this was the one who prayed and you have children, and someone comes to downplay and demean that person, simply because of your perception or maybe your biases. Can I tell you, this man will not keep quiet. He's had too much testimonies as a result of the grace of that man. This is what we must be mindful of in the body of Christ because the body of Christ is confused today. Members are sincerely confused. They don't know what to believe again simply because of the ego of we preachers largely. It's time to shelve our prejudices and our pride and to exalt Jesus. If Jesus is not afraid of the current state of the church, you are not greater than him. Allow him to be the head of the church. Don't take the issue of the church so personal. You are not Jesus. I am not Jesus. He stands in the midst of the church and in the midst of our imperfection. Let me assure you, the mission of the church will not be aborted. The jealousy of God is protecting this work. And in life and in death, at the end of it, Jesus is coming for a victorious church. If you believe me, shout a loud amen. amen. This is especially for younger ministers that are rising up. May I encourage you that as you mentor the life of those who have gone ahead of us, and as you have the privilege to look at our lives, beware. Do not swallow everything hook, line, and sinker. We are not perfect people. Do not dishonor those before you because of the limitations you see. But be wise enough to edit the things you are learning. Joshua Selman is not Jesus Christ. Do not be ashamed to edit that which is profitable for you and that which is not profitable for you. There is nothing to be ashamed of. So that the people who we are raising will become better versions of us. This is our goal. Are we together? But that sense of invincibility and perfection will keep destroying the church. It is ugly to see ignorance and pride go together. Very ugly to see limitation through ignorance and pride. It is amazing that sometimes we are impressed with our very little results. But from the lens of superior orientation, you can see the gaps in our knowledge. It's time for our hearts to be open to receive. Is God speaking to someone? Write this down. Regardless the imperfections in the body of Christ, regardless the imperfections in the body of Christ, Christ is still in the midst of his body. Regardless the imperfections in the body of Christ, Christ is still in the midst of her. Nigeria right now, as you would have noticed, is spearheading a global revival by the privilege of God's grace. God is sending prophetic and apostolic envoys from Nigeria across the globe. It is a rare privilege that God has given us. It doesn't mean that there are no revival in other regions, but for some reason, God has chosen in this season to honor Nigeria and grant us the grace to spearhead revivals. But my call to us is we must be careful. The privilege of carrying the lamp of God to the nations does not mean we are better than other nations because I can tell you our problems are glaring before us. As anointed as we are, we have not been able to solve many problems in this nation. So God's call is an election of grace. Let it never be a reason for pride. Now God is sending us to the United Kingdom, sending us to the U.S. It does not mean there are no men of God there. There are mighty men of God. And even us in addressing Western nations, please let us not make it look as if everybody there has backslidden. Because there are still mighty men and women who are doing great things for the kingdom that some of us do not even come close to. 
there are still veterans in the gospel serving God with all their lives. I think it was John Hagee, Pastor John Hagee. I listened to him a few, um, a few days. I was just sitting just to rest and then I decided to listen to him and he shared something within about maybe 15 to 28 minutes profound revelation that gave me such an orientation i said look at this man's depth of conviction an old man right now if you call joshua selman anointed you did not lie if you say joshua selman is trying as far as doing his best for the kingdom you did not lie if you say joshua selman loves the lord with all his heart truly you did not lie but if you say Joshua Selman has everything, you lied. No, you lied. There are many dimensions you will need in your life that may not be available here. Our, our dream is to see to it that we piece together by knowledge. You see, when we seem to sound complete, it is not because we were intrinsically complete. It's because we became students of other dimensions of knowledge too. That is why when we speak, there seems to be a level of healthy balance. It is not because we were balanced by default. The bias of our trainings would have still affected us, but because we outsourced dimensions that was not captured in our training, but needed for our growth. I didn't learn excellence and leadership and administration by default. We learned fasting and prayer and spirituality. Yes, it came with our training. But these other aspects did not come with our training. We had to outsource it from the intelligence that is invested in the body. And thanks be to God that we opened up our hearts to receive this. Now, let me show you how the lamb's wife looks like. Revelations 21. The Bible calls us the bride of Christ. I want to show you how the lamb's wife looks like so that if that does not look like you, you will know what to adjust. Revelations 21 verse 9. If it is true that you and I are the bride of Christ, then I want to show you a biblical portrait. Thanks again to the experience of John that we have the privilege of seeing how the lamb's wife should look. Are you ready now? Verse 9. And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had seven vials, full of the seven last plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come hither, and I will show you the bride, the lamb's wife. So everything you are about to see is the lamb's wife. Verse 10. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain, and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem descending from out of heaven, out of heaven from God. 11, he said, having the glory of God and her light was like unto stone most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. 12, and had a wall great and high and had 12 gates and at the gates 12 angels and the names written thereon, which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. Verse 13, it says on the east, three gates, the north, three gates, the south, three gates, the west, three gates. Next verse, please. And the wall of the city had 12 foundations, and in them the name of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. Uh-huh. And he that talked with me had a golden reed to measure the city and the gates thereof and the wall thereof. Next verse. It says, and the city lieth four square. This is the verse of emphasis. Watch the lamb's wife. And the length is as large as the breadth. And he measured the city with a reed. Twelve thousand furlongs. Let's read the last sentence together. And the length and the breadth and the height of it are equal. This is balance and perfection. This is the lamb's wife. No exaggeration. No over exaggeration of dimensions to the detriment of another. Let me have seven of my gentlemen. Please come.
please come. Any one of you, just come. Just come and line up here. I want to show you something as we, let's appreciate them. Just come and stand facing the congregation. One, two, three, four, five, six. Any one more person? Come, protocol or whatever, it don't have to be, just come. Now just stand and space yourself, look at this. Let's call every one of these gentlemen dimensions in the spirit. These together represent the seven lampstands. This man, for instance, has been given the gift in this example of revelation. You want to understand the mysteries of the kingdom? Come here. Say this man has been granted the grace for prayer and supplication. Say this man has been granted the grace for administration and leadership. Are you getting the point now? Please take note of the things I'm telling you. Say this man has been granted the grace for influence. Say this man has been granted the grace for prayer and supplication. Say this man has been granted the grace for the prophetic. And say this man has been granted the grace for wealth. Look at all of these dimensions. Now, when God is training this man, he will not train him as though these other dimensions exist. All he will see within the scope of his training is revelation. At the end of it, he will become a solid man with revelation, but he's going to be broke because he has not understood the principles that make for wealth. His prayer life may not be rich. Administratively, he may not do well. But you see, when you add your revelation, hold his hands, to prayer, add his hands to administrative excellence, add his hands to wealth and influence, add his hands to the ministry of prayer. He can't even remember what I asked him. <laughs> Can you imagine? He was so listening to me and now he cannot even remember what I asked him. <laughs> Your people are saying prayer. And then you add this say to the prophetic and you add this to wealth and abundance. This plus this plus this plus this plus this plus this plus this equal the body of Christ. Are we together now? The ministry of revelation in this example, uniting with the ministry of influence and the ministry of administration and leadership, prayer influence, prayer and supplication, the prophetic wealth and abundance will produce a more perfect bride. Now, this man has people learning under him. This man has people learning under him. This man and all of them are succeeding in their individual adventures, except that no one of them can produce the bigger picture. So, you continue your work building your people as far as your diligence is concerned. But do not be afraid to let them know that there are other dimensions needed that may not be captured in your experience. The day you are teaching on revelation, everybody here keeps quiet and listens to you because it is your office. Where's my prayer man? The, when this man is praying, thank God for your revelation, but keep quiet and learn on prayers. Are we together? When this man is teaching on administration, don't just know it away. It's not only demons that cause failure. Chaos and disorder can cause failure. In heaven where Satan is not, order still remain there. So you receive from this man and then grace for influence. You may be anointed but still small. You need to access to know the dynamics of becoming a voice. Can I tell you? I pray and I look forward to the day that God in his infinite mercies will walk on us men of God and purge our hearts from the guile of ego, the guile of that sense of self-consciousness to a point where we can allow the various dimensions of the body to find expression to produce the kind of bride that Jesus is returning for. We are tired of poverty in the body. We are tired of lack of character in the body. We are tired of low level dimensions of spiritual revelation, whereas there is so much more. We are tired of prayerlessness in the body. We are tired of demons accessing the lives and the destinies of people as though the body were powerless. All these possibilities may not be in my life, 
but they are in the body. So when you come to Jesus and say, help me, he will say, I have helped you already. What he meant is there is a dimension in the body that can solve your poverty problems. Father, I am tired of serving you. I'm a man of character, but I am poor. He will refer you to the body. The body has what it takes to bring you out of there. Lord, my ministry is not going global. He will refer you to the body. So you see, when he says all things are possible, it is because he broke himself and he gave the body. Listen to me. You have to understand this. No matter how anointed I am, I will not be able to sing like my precious people. I sacrifice my singing for preaching. A beautiful sacrifice, by the way. As far as my assignment is concerned, I used to sing better than this. Sadly, it may not return easily again. But I must be able to appreciate them. Are we together now? Yes. I want you to look at this. What dimension have you ignored in loyalty to a man of God? What dimension have you ignored? And I confess our insecurities sadly. I'm not saying this to demean the body of Christ. You know this. I have respected and will ever respect the body of Christ. You will never find dishonor to the body, not from me. This is not an advocacy to look down on your pastor. This is not an advocacy to not be faithful. No, I am not teaching on faithfulness. In terms of administration and in terms of the call and assignment, everybody will have to be planted somewhere. But listen to me, I will still repeat that no single individual can carry the entirety of what is needed but we can be beneficiaries of it. So, revelation, I repeat again, the grace for prayer and supplication. You can find this man fasting for six months, non-stop. This man can fast for two weeks dry. Do not bully this man. It is not within the scope of his call. Let him be comfortable supplying the dimension. And do not look at him as less of an anointed man. Do not use the, the requirements that are in people's... If I am called to be a prophet, fasting will be my lifestyle. If I am called to the apostolic ministry, fasting will be my lifestyle. But for God's sake, do not bully the businessman and say because you are not on six months dry, you are not anointed. The nature of his call, give him the liberty to subscribe to the terms. Many of you here in your higher institutions of learning, there are other people who will be doing 15 courses and others are doing seven. Don't bully them. Every call has a job description and a requirement. Do not use the template of the prayer warrior to judge the man who is a leader. Do not use the template of the leader. And you may find the administrator, he may just fast for two days and is enough. And yet another person will tell him that God told me to fast from now until September. Do not look down the person and say, nonsense, you are just fasting rubbish. There is a role that that fast has to play in building the body. If the instruction did not come to you, respect the one the instruction came to. Hold your hands together, guys. Play the strings for me. No eye has seen, no ear has heard what God has prepared for me. So I submit to his work in me till Christ be formed in me. No eye has seen, no ear has heard what God has prepared for me. So I submit to his work in me till Christ be formed in me. You look at a great ministry like this, and the face that you see is Joshua Selman. But I'm announcing to you that you are not exactly right. Thank God for leadership and thank God for sacrifice. But let me tell you what equals koinonia. There is an aesthetics department that has produced this beauty that you see and admire. No matter how anointed I am, leave me with these flowers and watch the mess that I will produce here. 
what you are appreciating is not you are saying Joshua Selman but I'm telling you that there are diversities of gifts that have produced this behind the scene there is a guitar playing and there are my precious people playing and singing with such such harmony and symphony this is beyond what I can do these gentlemen you see standing behind are incredible leaders who handle various functions within this ministry and I can tell you they have done an incredible job man of God do you have the unashamedness and the self-security to admit the contribution of others we always like pushing everybody I am the only one no those days are over I announce to you those days are over Jesus is ready to press his body to a higher dimension of perfection and no single individual will use ego to stop God's program his hand has been stretched forth already there is no going back are we together you step into this place from 6 a.m. in the morning you find out that there are people who are already walking laboring we are there, we may be praying and doing the things we are doing. But ladies and gentlemen, there are people who are working. My precious people have been standing behind the camera. You know what it means to stand for that long? Now, hear me. How about the many across the nations of the world who have donated their houses, their churches, donated their grounds, and at their own cost, they have put all kinds of LEDs to make sure that as many would sit down and follow this broadcast. How will you dare say Joshua Selman is the only reason why this is happening? Body of Christ, it's time for us to wake up. Put all our pride and prejudices I don't like this I don't like that throw it away It's the same heaven we're going I wonder what we'll do when we get there till the Christ is formed in me till your glory revealed through me no eye has seen nor ear has heard what God has prepared for me so I submit to your work in me till Christ be formed in me let me tell you the truth as a person and as a ministry I have my reservations my many reservations across the body of Christ there is no denying and there is no hiding but it's too small a reason to practice hate it is too small a reason to demean downplay no I will not do that I have my reservations there are things you will not find practice in koinonia I assure you for as long as I'm alive I I have read my Bible and I know by the grace of God the things that are scriptural we have learned from fathers we have learned from doctrine we have learned from experience and we have learned from history it is sufficient enough to guide us and give us a worthy compass into an excelling ministry however I still do not have the right to point to another man's work and call him Beelzebub that is not given to you I can speak for myself I am too young in experience and too young in ministry to sustain the pride and audacity to point fingers at people in the ministry if ever there is anyone to do it the fathers have enough credence to speak if they speak we will honor but if they are silent we should be wise enough to be silent are we together now what the fathers are not doing dear sons let us be wise when we break ranks and jurisdiction there are consequences in the spirit Saul lost his place because he thought he could be both Saul and Samuel leave the priests to do their work if you are a king remain in your place of honor and God will bless you there listen correcting the body of Christ you've heard me say is an office let us be careful just because God is silent by his mercy does not mean he's endorsing our childishness we must be very careful many have tried it there were people who tried to carry the ark and try to do a lot of things and they died there it was a well-intentioned project 
And there are many younger ministers, if we are not careful, we are going to bring a curse upon ourselves because of zeal without experience. Let us learn from history. Let us learn from doctrine. Let us learn from the fathers and then learn from the pain of others who have made these mistakes before. It is foolish to make another mistake that has been made before. The Bible says the things that are written aforetime, they are for our learning. Some of you here are ministers of the gospel. Some of you who are watching are ministers of the gospel. When you do not believe a thing, you just pray. Do not be the person pointing hands and insulting people because even Jesus was called Beelzebub. I tell you sincerely by the integrity of scripture, there are many things we do not know. Let us stay on that which we know and respect the body of Christ. He may not be a man of God, but he's an elder enough deserving of your respect. Mama may not be called into any ministry, but one prophetic word from her can rewrite the narrative of your destiny. Let me recap one more time, and then we find a place to pray. This is the body of Christ. This is not the body of Christ. No matter how efficient this man is, he's only an effective member of the body. Can I tell you, if koinonia is the only ministry on earth, we will not be at a loss, but I promise you there are many dimensions of God that we will not see. It is the truth. There are many dimensions of God that we will not see. I bring to your memory an example I made earlier on again. Imagine the Bible as the book of Leviticus alone. Imagine the Bible as the Gospels alone with Jesus at the center. And Jesus himself was secured to say there are many things you are going to learn beyond that which I am teaching you. It will not be by me, but when it comes, learn it. It is for your overall profiting. Then comes Paul. And you know the history of Paul? How could Jesus point to Paul to bring the Pauline epistle? A man who was a Pharisee, persecuted the church, were they no better people? That is God for you. One of these days we will see drunkards in the body of Christ becoming apostles. I hope we will have the stamina to receive them and not say, I used to see you. I was once Rahab the prostitute, but I met Jesus. Do not judge me by yesterday. I was once Cephas, but now I am Peter. I was Abraham before, but right now I am Abraham. Can I tell you the truth? Nobody in the body of Christ has been given the authority to accredit and to discredit. We do not have that knowledge. We are too limited. It is pride and even foolishness to venture into that kind of thing. The only basis for accreditation or otherwise is scripture. And even at that, we must do it graciously because there are dimensions. If you had seen what God started doing with us years ago, we would not look like what we are now. Unfortunately and sadly, when we started, people used the lens of their ignorance to write all kinds of propositions. But look what God has done today. Only God knows how many other people are still in the cave of Adulam. While we are pushing them, it is the hand of God that is moving them forward. Just because you do not believe in the ministry of women, I hope you will not ignore the next the next Catherine Kuhlman that is coming. I hope your ego will not push them down. Listen very carefully. Reinhard Bonke has died, but where is his mantle? I hope the person who receives his mantle will be accepted within the body. E.W. Kenyon is gone. All these men have gone. But mantles do not leave the earth to the heaven. That means they will come upon the most unusual vessels. You will see politicians that will become preachers. You will see men and women that will carry dimensions of fire. I hope we will appreciate them. Remember my message on redefining revivals. That in the coming revival, it's not only men of God who will be featured. No. Elijah and Daniel and Solomon and Jesus equal the complete Bible. Not Elijah alone. This is my clarion call to the body of Christ. It is time we love Jesus and love his work more than our ego. If Christ tarries one day, this man standing before you will join the cloud of witnesses. It's not a negative confession, you see. If he comes to meet us, glory be to God, we'll be caught up with joy and gallancy. 
But like Paul, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. But the thing is, would it be said when you are gone that you were so, what's the word, egocentric that you did not allow the program of God go forward? i rather let Koinonia close and let the program of God continue than to allow my pride to stand in the way of that which God is doing across the globe. From Nigeria to South Africa to Ghana to Kenya, all across Europe, America, Australia, the Caribbeans, even the places, the Middle East, the places you never imagined that the gospel and the power of God will be there. There is an emergence of men and women who are carrying fire that God is raising. Some of them are in the fivefold ministry. Some of them are in business. Some of them are in leadership. We must embrace all of them. These are the components that make the body of Christ. I remind you again, I stand on behalf of any man of God, including myself, who may have taught you wrongly, maybe innocently so, and I apologize to you on behalf of people who may not have shown you the way more perfectly, but it's time to hide every pride and help the body of Christ for God's sake grow. The world without Kenneth Hagin would have been lopsided, but the world with Kenneth Hagin alone would have been lopsided. The world without E.W. Kenyon would be lopsided. When I say mention them, you call them God's generals with an S. When our dispensation is over and if Christ still tarries, one day when they are talking about us, they will not mention Joshua Selman alone. They will say once upon a, man, a time, a man called Joshua Selman. I pray that your name will be added to that list. Not as a source of destruction. Jesus, you be lifted higher. Higher. Be lifted higher. Jesus, you be lifted high, high, be lifted high in this generation. Jesus, you be lifted high, be lifted high. Let our King be. Let your name be lifted up, oh, This is my call to the body of Christ. All the pointing fingers, the fighting up and down, the negative body languages that come from denomination to denomination, the ill speakings, one to another i repeat to you there will be no winner there will be no winner we will only end up confusing the sheep of jesus christ we will only end up creating more error and the devil will slip through our pride and cause more casualty in the body of christ than we ever are aware of there is no denying the fact that the body of christ is like a wounded soldier but responsible men, please answer me. Do you run away from your wife because she is wounded? That is the time you will show her love more than ever before. That is the time you will stand true to your vow. In the midst of the wound that this bride of Christ has, character wounds, financial wounds, I do not endorse licentiousness. There are many things that need to be corrected in the body of Christ. And we are praying that God will open the eyes of many who need to make several adjustments. God is helping us all. But I tell you, it is too small a reason. Nobody has the credential to point fingers at any in the body. Because from the lens of every man, you are perfect in your own eyes. It is others who will look at you and say, Apostle, would you want to adjust this and that and that? When you fight the program of God, his jealousy will take away your lampstand. Please hear me. This is a clarion call to the body of Christ. 
There are many people in the body of Christ today who have not died, but their lampstands have been taken. Do you know why? Because they became such an interruption to God's program. He will honor them for their contribution so far. But do not be surprised when you find out that relevant people today suddenly begin to lose relevance, regardless the efforts. It is because God will not tolerate any man interrupting his program. There is a prophet in the wilderness who is now a drunkard. He needs somebody to reach him there. There is some prostitute somewhere who needs to carry that Deborah banner. There is somebody somewhere in the Middle East. Our ego has interrupted God's program for too long. For God's sake, body of Christ, for God's sake, co-laborers, can we for once, we were able to criticize the fathers. It's amazing that many of us, especially to my generation of preachers, it is easy to point at the fathers and say, you did not do this, you did not do well. Now the fathers have been silent. God has granted us the grace to come on stage and look how much we are messing up. We need to go back and retrace our steps. The first step is to repent from our pungency towards the fathers. We need to repent intrinsically and repent in their presence if God grants us the grace for our ill speaking of the fathers. Most of us have not lasted 12, 13, 20 years. These men have been here 57 years, 60 years in the gospel with solid integrity that some of us do not come close to. How do we insult them? Who is mentoring us into this derision? What kind of pride and attack is leading us into this nonsense? There must be repentance. The best of us must still be a student. History has whipped and punished many people because of pride. I pray that our generation will not fall prey to this. This is a clarion call from a heart of love and a heart that is sincere towards God as a contribution towards the maturity of the body of Christ. It is not a call to condemnation. It is not a call to pointing fingers. But can I tell you, whoever listens to this message and makes an honest adjustment, you will see the degree to which God will feature you because a season is about to open in the body of Christ. And I have taught you about seasons, that every time seasons are opening, there are people who make the list and there are people who do not make the list again. You know I am not lying. It is my prayer that God will give us longevity of relevance. And the, the greatest way to secure longevity of relevance is to not be an interruption to God's program through pride. For those who need adjustments in the area of character, we pray that God will grant us grace to make the required adjustments and to rise to a higher level of moral excellence as he grants grace. To those who need to humble ourselves and admit that there are just things we do not know, I am praying that God will give us the self-security to admit. And members, as men of God come out to help, do not look down on them. Because sometimes it is members that join the heads of pastors and join the heads of people carrying negative statements from pillar to post. We must repent from some of these things. It is time to be instruments of bonding within the body. We are better together. We are better forever. Are we together? My final statement before we pray, listen carefully. My final statement before we pray is to all those who look up to our lives for mentorship and for spiritual direction. There are two things I want to tell you. Number one, you must never allow the abundance of revelation that is coming to you to produce pride and disrespect. Nobody who has received from any man has the right to point hands at that man. Whether you appreciate the man or not, the fact that they made contributions in your life, you owe them your respect eternally and forever. This is what the Bible teaches. There are fathers of faith today, even if they turn and say apostle, just an example. If a father of faith turns today and say apostle, I don't know this, teach me. I will teach them on my knees. I will not teach them standing. I will teach because we have grant, been granted grace, but I will do it on my knees to remind them that even though God has granted us revelation, you still remain fathers. And we honor you as touching what you represent. For some of the younger ministers coming, please hear me. It is not all about anointing. 
it is not even all about character. It is about understanding. You must know how God's system and God's program works. Do not find yourself insulting somebody because of his advocacy of prosperity. If you are in ignorance and you do not see the relevance of it, just keep quiet and allow them serve the people God has called them to do. If somebody is involved in deliverance and you do not believe in deliverance, you just teach the truth that God has given you. But don't go to the extent of tearing down another person and being sarcastic because number one, you are wasting your time. And number two, that state is an attack itself. The zenith of transformation is not knowledge. The zenith of transformation is love. If you claim you have been so transformed, don't show me by the revelation that comes from you. Show me by the depth of love. Not pretentious love that ends on the stage. Love genuinely. You may have your reservations about the body, but that is not enough reason to hate. And hear me one more time to the younger ministers that are rising. Please go back and edit the things we have taught you. Receive the things that are consistent with scripture. And the things that we have taught you that is out of our pride or our insecurities, politely edit them while you keep respecting us. You don't need to tell us you have edited them. Your results will show that you have edited them. Are we together now? Can we do some prayers tonight? Rise up on your feet. Hold hands together. I want you to still see this. I'm going to use this example one last time and then we're done. The Nigerian church, this is God's goal for us. Unity is not uniformity. There are people who need to repent. They don't need transformation. What they need is repentance. It's as simple and honest as that. There are people who need a lot of readjustment as far as character is concerned. There are many people who need to make a lot of adjustments. I have my reservations as far as the body of Christ is concerned based on the truth of scripture that I have seen, based on history, experience, doctrine, and mentorship. However, I will tell you, it is too small a reason to point fingers. Koinonia, you are part of this spiritual family. You should be the last person to go about rejoicing over the downfall, pointing hands at people, comparing people to people. You may go for a program in another church and you may hear the man of God teaching. He may not give you a sound uh, uh, as, as uh, uh, an exegesis as you may be receiving here, but you must, you must have the heart to open up yourself and to receive what you can receive. If there is nothing to learn, learn brotherly kindness. Let's assume that the whole revelation is zero. Learn brotherly kindness, and that's it. If you look for trouble in the church, you will find it there. If you look for imperfection, you will find it there. You look for moral flaws, you will find it there. You look for jealousy and bitterness, you will find it there. But for God's sake, when you look for Jesus, in the midst of the seven lampstands, you will still see him standing, protecting his bride with an unbending jealousy. This is my message to the body of Christ. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let your love increase. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. The walls of pride and prejudice shall cease when we are your instrument whether it is a difference based on culture or a difference based on gender or a difference based on personality or a difference based on the modus operandi of ministry or business, whether it's a difference based on political affiliation or a difference based on skin color, whether it is a difference based on whatever biases, none of those differences is strong enough to interrupt God's program. When Jesus came to die, he died for all of us. 
when the Holy Ghost came, he did not choose people. He came for all of us. We are all products of God's mercy. And at every point in our lives and our faith adventure, we will need the mercy of God. I have taught you the mercy of God extensively. The first prayer you are going to pray right now, following or in this place, is for yourself. Lord, in any way, I have contributed to the destruction of the body of Christ. I repent and I ask you for mercy. Open your mouth and begin to pray. In any way, I have joined the heads of men of God together, carrying stories from pillar to post, comparing churches, comparing men of God. No, that is not our assignment. Someone open up your mouth and pray. In any way, insulting Orthodox churches, insulting Pentecostal charismatic churches, insulting prophetic and apostolic churches, insulting churches that are rich in administration and excellence. Are you praying? Lord, we repent, we repent, we repent. Hallelujah. Number two, I want you to pray for the body of Christ. Mention the name of any man of God you believe in and any man of God you know from your heart of hearts. Mention any church that you know and you believe in. I want you to cry and say, Lord, show mercy. Mercy and increase. Let your body remain strong. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray. Let it be from the depth of your heart that God will help us as the body of Christ to grow and mature from this life of hatred and anger, pointing hands at people and all these kinds of immaturities. Is someone praying? Pray for that old pastor that raised you from an Orthodox church. Now you have been filled with the Holy Ghost. You are a revivalist and you are looking down on him. Pray and ask God to forgive you and pray that God will continue to help them. Pray for every denomination you know that the dimension of God committed to them that it will find expression and it will bless the body. Excellence, administration, moral excellence, the anointing, character, influence. Shaleke paratos kavrande beretus kevriashas. Discerning the body of Christ. Hallelujah. Elijah was a very angry man. For anointing Elijah, you pay the price by fire. Fire would come and consume you for interrupting him while he's resting. Elisha had some little children who were laughing at him and said, Ah, you bald-headed man. And he commanded using the power he carried. He commanded animals, she bears, to come out from the wilderness and eat those children, injured them. Can you imagine that? So there was a generation who had been mentored by the Elijahs and Elishas. Now they had become the disciples of Jesus. And when other people were pointing hands at Jesus, they say, we remember, history tells us how to deal with this kind of people. Should we call down fire? And Jesus said, do you not know what spirit you are of? In other words, I have come as an improvement. To Elijah's and Elisha's while it used to be profitable to just kill now we have come with the ministry of love hallelujah I'd like you to pray right now and say every dimension that is invested in the body and is not yet at work in my life I receive by faith right now go ahead and pray Every dimension made for my profiting 
scattered across the body of Christ that may not yet be at work in my life every genuine dimension scattered within the body and across the body that is that can make for my efficiency spiritually financially and otherwise in the name of Jesus I receive someone is praying hallelujah hallelujah when I travel across the regions of this nation especially I like to minister in non-denominational apostolic meetings that seem to converge the body of Christ together many times when I have the privilege and the honor of ministering to the body of Christ across those regions um, when God gives me the liberty I always like to call some of the fathers of faith to come to the front and to just speak over the body of Christ within that region. I do that because I believe that number one, they are veterans of the gospel, and then number two, they represent different dimensions. It, it does something to the mindset of the people. Please, I repeat again, do not find yourself fighting the body of Christ. You have a right now and forever to have your reservations. As a ministry, I have a right to protect you from anything that I do not believe is healthy for your spiritual nourishment. I have a right to teach you that which is consistent for doctrine, reproof, correction, instruction in righteousness like the Bible says. But I do not have a right to turn and call anybody Beelzebub. No. That is not the jurisdiction of my ministry. If my ministry is light enough, I should not fear darkness. Is that true? There was darkness in the days of Jesus. And yet the light of Jesus was so bright, it threatened every darkness. The presence of fake men of God and fake prophets is not enough reason to derail the body. If your light is bright enough, the illumination that comes from that light, I tell you the truth, can swallow every error. In the time of Jesus, there was error. In the time of Moses, there was error. The world has never been free of antichrist manifestations until Christ comes. So having people that walk in defiance to the true gospel is not news. But the Bible tells us in John 1, 5, that the light shineth in darkness. When we preach the true gospel and we mentor people properly, the rate of transformation and growth will far supersede any kind of fear we have. It is not the absence of darkness that will bring light. It is the illumination of light, even in the midst of darkness. Hallelujah. Can I give you a last prayer point? Father, the role I have to play as far as the grace you have given me is concerned, I receive the grace and the courage to play that role. Open up your mouth and pray. Do not say they are anointed men and women of God. Do not say there are great business people. There is a role that you have to play. And if you do not play that role effectively, you will rob us from learning Christ through you. You will rob us from experiencing a dimension of Christ that has been invested into your life. Open up your mouth and pray. Pray from the depth of your heart. Pray from the depth of your heart. We used to sing a song years ago. Guess what the song says? I'll serve, I'll serve, I'll serve you, Lord, forever. I'll serve, I'll serve, I'll serve you, Lord, forever. I'll do my best. I'll do my best, I'll do my best for you with my entire life. I'll do my best 
my very best I'll do my best for you that's our closing song tonight I'll serve I'll serve I'll serve you Lord forever I'll serve I'll serve I'll serve you Lord forever I'll do my best I'll do my best I'll do my best for you I'll do my best I'll do my best The day we stand before Jesus, the Son of the living God, he's not going to say, Joshua Selman, did you do everything? No. Did you do that which was committed to you? I gave you three people to raise and to train and to build. Were you faithful in it? No. I was around backbiting and being jealous and being angry that I was given only three people. Man of God, not all of us will have international ministries. Your job is not to be international. Your job is to be faithful. If God gives you 10 members, stay on them and raise them with all your heart. Listen, I need to douse the insecurity and the narrative that is creeping into the body of Christ. Once you do not have a large congregation, once you are not doing ministry across the globe, once you don't seem to have a global name, Apostle Joshua Selman, you might not be doing well. I have deconstructed this thought again and again. The day we stand before Jesus, you will be surprised where all of us will be standing on the queue. Some of the people you have neglected will be the ones standing close to him as far as the detailed accomplishment of the assignments are concerned. Anna the prophetess, stop looking for a crowd. Stay in the temple and pray Jesus to come. Let us stop some of this unhealthy comparison, wrong definitions and parameters that we use to measure ministry. There are people who are about losing their bishopric today. Everybody cannot be the Nathaniel Bassis and the Dunsins and all of that. No, everybody cannot be the Benny Hins, but you can be faithful where you are called and to do your very best. And whether he gave you five talents or two, you can be sure that you will still hear the same thing. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. This is what we desire. If God has called you to be a kingdom financier, Stop trying to build branches. You will only multiply error in the body of Christ. Stay in your place of call and be faithful. Take advantage of the mercy of God. You are an intercessor. Give God your best. God has spread your tentacles to the nation. You must do it with the spirit of humility, not laughing at other people as though it were by your power. People have sent me numerous text messages about our UK conference. Massive, massive things God is doing. The number of people who have registered, I mean, it's we're in awe of what God has done. But I cannot look down on people to say, man of God, you who has, you are doing a small conference that just has three people and you laugh at them. Make sure you never find yourself doing that. Do not laugh at any man of God. They may hold a conference with five people that is made up of Billy Graham, Reinhard Bonke, E.W. Kenyon. Those are the five people you are laughing at. Whereas you are full of thousands of people who will tell you crucify him tomorrow. I rest my case. Jesus, you be lifted higher. Higher. Be lifted higher. Jesus, you be lifted higher. Gentlemen, thank you very much. May God bless you. Let's celebrate them. <laughs> Hallelujah. Everyone stand if you can. This is...
a very serious moment please no movement around I want to make the altar call you came to church and you have met every one of these people but you have not met Jesus you are still in trouble you came to church and you met prosperity that is wonderful you came to church and you met healing that is wonderful you came to church and you met breakthrough that is wonderful you came to church and you even met anointing you came to church and you met Greek and Hebrew sound exegesis of doctrine but none of those things equal Jesus they only find their value when Jesus is exalted above them all you are here tonight and whilst you heard me speak about the body of Christ the Holy Ghost began to speak to your heart that above and beyond every man of God and every doctrine and every denomination the person the object of our admiration and pursuit is Jesus and you are saying apostle I need to surrender my life and my heart to Jesus or you are here and you are saying apostle I found my life veering off in many dimensions and I need restoration and dedication it gives me joy beyond imagination when I see people come and stand here to make their ways right with Jesus give me an opportunity tonight to lead you to this Jesus the one who has made our lives what it is the one who is willing to pick you right where you are and to transform your life I'm going to count one to five these two categories of people I like you to summon the courage do not wait for anybody to be the first wherever you are with boldness and with gallancy knowing that you are coming to your Savior walk and come and stand right now stand in front here in front of your LED screens and for those who are connecting from across the globe I like you to indicate your interest for Jesus I begin my counting now celebrate them as they come koinonia one two come are you celebrating a harvest three make it right with Jesus this is what it's about you came for koinonia but let koinonia be the usher that leads you to Jesus the one deserving of your allegiance the one deserving of your worship he is the epicenter of all that we are and all that we do please keep coming three I count to five and then I begin to pray thank you for encouraging them koinonia thank you for motivating them hallelujah all the overflows you can move to your LED screens and for those who are connecting from across the globe wherever you are alone or in group as I lead them to pray I like you to participate in that prayer and you can send us an information that you just made Jesus Lord of your life and we'll be more than glad to follow up in prayer I appreciate every one of you thank you for listening to this teaching and thank you for making it right with Jesus there is always life with Jesus please may I request if you can lift your right hand high above your head as a sign of surrender and may I request that you say this after me say Lord Jesus I declare that I love you with all my heart I declare that I believe that you died for me I believe that you rose again for my justification right now I receive Jesus into my heart as my Savior as my Lord and as my King I declare that the power of sin Satan hell and the grave is broken over my life from tonight until forever please help that lady I declare that I am a child of God washed by the blood of the lamb amen keep your hands lifted father thank you for these precious people who are here standing and across the overflows and the many who are making Jesus Lord of their lives across the nations of the earth this is what you have called us to do to herald the supremacy of your person and this we have done tonight I pray in the name of Jesus and by the authority of Scripture that their sins be forgiven 
and in the name of Jesus I call you bona fide recipients of the life of God I declare upon you that the power of sin Satan hell and the grave is broken over your life and any spirit that has had legal access over your life I declare that the power is broken right now in the name of Jesus from tonight until forever I declare upon you that you walk in newness of life and you walk in righteousness in the name of Jesus Christ you go forward ever and backward never for in the name of Jesus Christ we pray amen and amen congratulations you are saved you are born again let me request that you please move to my right which will be your left from where you are there's a group of counselors that will have a quick word with you and then you'll be back to your seat let's honor them as they go koinonia give them a big god bless you hallelujah just a word or two on our uk conference and we're done thank you so much for your patience now i got i got a few reports from a few people that they've been trying to register for the dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it see you on our next video bye pray 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 for your destiny the phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.